or okay it's a little after 6 30 probably about 6 33 6 34 go ahead and call this meeting to order and ask for the roll to be called please dillard myers eisenman here Cortado, goss here patterson thorsland here esri here thank you we do have a quorum uh, move on then to approval of agenda and addendum. Is there such a motion? Moved by Mr. Goss. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Eisenman. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That's approved. We are then on to four, approval of minutes for the October 10th, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Thorsland? Is there a second? Second by Mr. Goss. Any additions or corrections? Discussion with those? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes. Uh, on to five, public participation. I have one slip. Uh, we ask that you please keep your comments to five minutes or less. Um, I have Casey, Casey Ost is Casey Ostober. And if you'd please step forward and if you have something to say or if you're just here for, yeah. And just ask that you state your name into the microphone for the record and then speak right into it so we can hear you well, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Casey Ostober from Penfield. Um, it is to our understanding um, that, that the county is considering having Penfield um, as one of the places to uh, have a cannabis business. Um, so I am here inquiring um, to know more about that and why the county has chosen Penfield to be a possibility, what their objectives are for that location. Is that or is this open discussion or sorry that's <laughs> Jim during public participation we don't have two-way back and forth conversations we're not set up to really do that okay it, it's okay yeah go ahead okay. well okay all in favor of suspending the rules aye, aye. aye. I'll oppose nay thank you that passes okay do you want to explain aye. Erica or I mean I, I think that uh, Jody mentioned Penfield in the discussion, and we had some discussion as an example, a town like Penfield, but there was no motion by the county or action by the county to target or intend to, say, a cannabis distribution center or a grower or an infuser would be in Penfield. So I think that uh, if you read the minutes, you would see that that was just a discussion. Uh, as an example, we could have said anywhere. I, and I think, Jody, you started that when, yeah, so maybe you want to explain. I guess um, the the motion or the, the zoning and the amendments and all that would be for the unincorporated Champaign County, and so Penfield would be one of the the towns that would Is be Is there affected. other towns that are unincorporated Champaign County? It would Champaign be Seymour, Seymour and Penfield. Those are the only two I know off the top of my head. Is that right, John? Uh, Fooseland, Dewey, um, no. They have a mayor. No. Yeah. Flat, Flatville. <laughs> I think that's it. So my heart is just near and dear to Penfield, so that's how I picked out Penfield because I can't speak into any other town. So that's the reason why Penfield was mentioned. So the move, the discussion, it would in, impact Penfield, but it's not just specifically Penfield. So what is the reasoning for wanting to pick an unincorporated town? I believe Jody was just using that as an example. Okay. Because um, what we do at the county, involve as far as zoning and regulations, involves the unincorporated. So Penfield not being a incorporated town, we have the zoning and regulations jurisdiction over the Penfield right. at the county level, and Penfield was just the example that Jody used. Um, we're 
the discussion about Penfield was just an example. We as the county, whether it – let's say we pass the ability to have cannabis businesses out in the unincorporated part of the county, we have no say as to who would come before us and ask for permits to have a business and where they would want. We wouldn't be the ones choosing that anyway. It would be some some other person or <laughs> – corporation or something that would choose Seymour to have a grow operation by chance. And then it would have to come through and all the regulations and everything. It's it's not, we wouldn't be actually actively choosing where a, such a business would be. So what is it put. that you guys, what is it that you guys are voting on? Whether or not to allow the business businesses at all um, in the county or what kind of regulations we want to put on them. Yeah, go ahead, Jody. Um, January 1st of 2020, the state is it's legalizing cannabis. Right. And so we have up to 12 months to opt out of that. So what my vote was last... As a county. As a county. And so I my vote is to opt out of having the unincorporated Champaign County be able to allow recreational cannabis businesses into those small towns. So that's and that's so that's the reason why we're even discussing and have to have it because we have twelve months from January first to have to opt out of it, or to say that we're going to allow it. So I guess my comment is: so the unincorporated towns; these are all very small towns. Um, Penfield alone only has two hundred people. Um, a majority of them being middle class um, people, mainly um, in the agriculture sector, and. Um, you know, we're just a, a very quiet town. As you know, we are unincorporated, so we don't have a mayor. You know, you can call for police control patrol, and it's going to take them 30 minutes to get there. I mean, we're just a very quiet town, and it's not something that I, and I don't want to speak for everybody in the town, but I know it's something that I don't want to see in my town because I would like to keep it a small, quiet town. And by bringing in a business, a big business like that, um, it's just, it leads to a lot of other things. Like who, who's going to do the police force? I mean, we don't, we don't have a police officer. You know, we rely on the county and we are in the most northeast end of the county. Um, you know, I know St. Joe is patrolled by county, but St. Joe's another 25 minutes from us. Um, and, I mean, there's not a lot of places in Penfield that have that business. So, I mean, I just enjoy having that small town where we're kind of left alone, and we would like to keep it that way. So I guess that's my take on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, any? I, that was the only slip I had. Anybody else care to? speak during public participation. Seeing none, thank you, Jim, for getting the microphone. Um, we'll close that part and move on to communications. Are there any communications from the committee members or staff or other board members in attendance? Seeing none, we will then move on to new business for information only. A, update regarding planning for follow-up IEPA-sponsored household hazardous waste collection in 2020. Ms. Monty. Hello. So uh, many of you have heard that the October 26th IEPA-sponsored household hazardous waste collection did not succeed and did not go as smoothly as we had hoped. <clears throat> we had scheduled for 1,450 persons to collect items from over that seven hour period and only approximately 900 to 1,000 persons were able to actually participate. We attribute that failure to the capacity of the contractor that was hired by IEPA. And so uh, immediately following the event, um, you may have received some public comments or calls about People, people's frustrations at having signed up and registered and their expectations that it would be a smooth event. We um, are in contact with IEPA and they are agreeable to having a follow-up collection in spring of 2020, uh, possibly as early as April 4th. 
which is a Saturday, uh, at a minimum to address those registered participants who were not able to get through the line um, and be approximately 400 to 450 persons. Or even more ideally, depending on their budget, um, to just open it up again and have a full-blown one-day event. So that's the status of that. Questions, discussion on this? Susan, I guess I have one quick question. If if we had another full day, if the budget and timing would work out, would the idea be to reach out to the people who didn't make it first, let them choose if, if they so desire to hopefully actually be able to participate in this and then open it up for the rest of the populace? Yes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? Seeing none, we will then move on to eight new business items to be approved by ELUC. We have A, direction regarding proposed zoning ordinance text amendment for adult use cannabis zoning regulations pursuant to public act, excuse me, 101-0027. Is there a motion? Mr. Doss. Yeah, I would move that uh, we prohibit the use uh, or the, oh, sorry. Okay, no problem. Mr. Thorsley. Moved by Mr. Thorsland, seconded by Mr. Patterson. Discussion. Mr. Thorsland. Yeah, well, if you read the state statutes regarding this, uh, there's a very limited amount of licenses. They're expensive. Uh, and as I said in the last meeting, I don't think Penfield is a targeted area for uh, a retail operation that would have a public presence, people coming to buy things. But all of Champaign County's at play, the unincorporated area. The, the list is quite long. John provided us with that. There's people that are involved in uh, manufacture or transport or packaging, infusers, uh, people that are growing. We have a grow operation you know, here in town. We have two retail places, and their public presence isn't even known. This is, uh, will become a state uh, allowable uh, endeavor that has uh, some benefit or tax dollars for the county and uh, we voted not long ago to tax at a certain rate uh, these businesses in unincorporated Champaign County so it seems odd to vote to collect tax from a business and then say they, they can't have a business. You could have a, an infuser which is basically just a business like a factory but quite small uh, next door and not know anything's happening in it that's dealing only with other retail businesses that are located somewhere else. So you, you, you're telling people that uh, a way that is allowed by the state uh, to make money, to have commerce, to have a, you know, a small manufacturing shop that would sell to somewhere in town in a municipality, a retail shop, a product they would never be on the street uh, in unincorporated Champaign County. It's basically just a business, like people that were making some other product, uh, but we're telling them they can't, which seems odd because, you know, the rural, uh, you know, I'm a rural guy who now lives in town, and the rural sort of motive uh, or uh, MO is that this is my land. I paid for it. I pay my taxes. I'm doing something legal on it. And I don't want the county to tell me what I can and can't do, especially if I'm within the realm of the law. We also have a right to agriculture in Champaign County. Uh, and some of these uses are agriculture in nature. Uh, so I, I'm in support of um, most, if not all, of these businesses to be allowed in the county. Because for one, I think we're going to see very few of it, if any. For two, I don't want to dictate to somebody who has the space to do it and is willing to go through all the steps to do it 
who's going to be very careful about doing it right because it's super expensive to become licensed to do any of these things, to jeopardize it by, you know, opening the door and letting the kids from the middle school come in and taste the candy or, you know, smoke something. That's not, simply just isn't going to happen. And if anybody thinks that any of the small towns in unincorporated Champaign County don't have people that are already doing this, even though it's not legal at this time, well, then I think you need to talk a little closer to your neighbors uh, because this is something that is happening in other states, something that's always happened here illicitly, and we're basically just allowing legal uses and legal businesses to function, and then we can realize some revenue if somebody decides to even do it. Uh, there's some discussion about maybe allowing it only in the 1.5 mile ETJ because it puts it in the county where we can realize revenue, but it's in that gray area between a recognized municipality and just unincorporated Champaign County. That maybe is a good compromise position, but I certainly don't want to be the one who says to, you know, Jody wants to suddenly become a candy maker uh, and, you know, adult candy, that you can't do it because we prohibited it. And you say, well, but the state says I can do it. And I'll say, well, no, you can't. Because I decided that I don't like that use. You know, what's next? Uh, you know, we go back to a dry town in Muhammad. Uh, we stop letting Casey sell alcohol. I think alcohol is a much more abusive chemical. If we want to ban all bad chemicals, then take away your coffee pot. Uh, so I'm in support of uh, working with this to allow these, these, you know, otherwise legal businesses to happen in the county, if they would even happen at all. Champaign County is only going to get something like, I think it's less than 10 of these. We have two retailers now that are applying for the recreational, but they're in the municipalities. I don't really think we get a whole bunch. The whole state's only getting something like 75 new licenses, right? Uh, and that's 102, 103 counties. So I don't see a giant rush to use fine Champaign County soil to grow pot because they grow it indoors anyway. Um, but I don't want to stop somebody who wants to be in the business of being a licensed transporter of this because, and they park their trucks in Champaign County uh, because I think that's wrong. Thank you, uh, Ms. Eisenman. I am unclear. Is this for the unincorporated Champaign County or this is for Champaign County? It's divided weird to me in the agenda that we can comment on the waste hauler license before <laughs> letter B. So I d I'm conf what, are we, what is this exactly? Is this for Champaign County or this is for unincorporated Champaign County? This is for, un for unincor unincorporated. Unincorporated. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, the, it's not for the whole county wide because the incorporated municipalities set their own rules. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, then I'll comment. Um, I am against it, and I addressed it last week or last month. Um, to prohibit it is simple. Um, you just, the cultivation, as you've addressed, people that want to grow it, they can cultivate it wherever they want because it's exempt through agriculture. So I'm not saying to stop growing it. I just don't want to see recreational cannabis growers or businesses come into these small towns that my heart has always been and will always be for the children. And I, I was a teacher. That's what my love is. And so you go, and I can use Penfield because I graduated, I went to Armstrong, so I know what it looks like. I know half the people there. Um, there's no after school program. There's no recreation center. There's no, there's nothing for these kids to do after school. And so and I know that you don't think one will come, and I hope that you're right. But what happened, my thing is, is it's not legal right now, and there's going to be so much new, how to, how, what does this look like? How is, how is Champagne and Urbana even going to regulate it? What's it going to look like? I know that it's not. And so my point is, let's step back. Let's slow down. How, how do you regulate it? It's, and I have from last month the things that are prohibited. Consumption of cannabis in any public place. A public place is defined as a place where a person could reasonably be expected to be observed by others. But a business, as I was reading last time, you they could have a special section where you could smoke it, eat it, whatever you want to do with it. And so my thing is, more of them, 
um, consumption in close proximity, physical proximity to people under 21. How is that going to be regulated or monitored in Penfield? Again, if someone is breaking the rule of the law, you call 30 minutes later, well, they've moved out of the proximity of the 21-year-old. Like, I'm just saying the regulation of it, I don't, it, it it's not going to be regulated. It's not going to be able to be regulated the way that it would need to be to make sure that it's staying on the up and up. Back to the children with nothing to do after school, unless they play sports or they're in an academic thing in the schools. If you have a business there, I know people are doing it now. And because they are doing it now, when it becomes legal and there's a real business there and there's candy and brownies for the little boy or the little girl after school, hey, it makes it a whole lot easier to give me that candy or that brownie. And so that's my whole point. There's no other positive thing there that's going to counterbalance this if we allow a recreational cannabis business into these small towns. Regulation of it, it it's going to be nearly impossible to regulate it. And it's going to cost the county to send out deputies out there to be able to monitor it and to keep make sure that things are going well. So I'm just saying, slow down. Let's see how Champaign and Urbana do with it. because. We are the first state to be the ones that actually have legislation of it. I know Colorado has it now, and there's lots of debates on both sides of it. It's increased homelessness. It's increased all sorts of problems. And so I'm thinking, I don't know. Just let's slow down. Let's keep it out of the unincorporated areas until we figure out how that, we're, if, that it's going to be regulated well. And I just don't think that it would have any sort of positive impact on these small rural communities. Thank you. Ms. Dillard Myers. Jody, you need to do your research. Uh, medical marijuana has been in Illinois for a number of years. Medical, recreational, it's going to be the same. Medical is probably stronger than recreational. Recreational is, is going to be only available to adults. Uh, I know some kids may slip through and get it, but they're slipping through and getting it now. The other thing you have to look at is econ one-on-one. If there's only 200 people in Penfield, I don't see large marijuana growers or retailers wanting to parade into Penfield. I see y'all got a saloon. Alcohol is more devastating, and it has been more devastating to my family than any marijuana ever had. Cause the rustes of the liver, divorce, child abuse, adult abuse. Marijuana has medicinal purposes. Helps old ladies with high flashes sleep at night. <laughs> Help cancer patients with their food intake. Uh, helps people with their chronic pain. The CBD oils are wonderful. Little old ladies running around kicking up their heels. You need to do your research, Jody. I doubt if any of these retailers are going to run to go into Penfield. But I hear Republicans always talking about government overstepping their bounds. Big government, you want to regulate everything. This is what I'm hearing from you tonight. You want to regulate the sale of marijuana in Penfield. That's crazy because people are going to want to purchase marijuana now that it's legal, whether they live in Penfield or wherever. And this is the other thing you should look at. I'd rather for somebody to be able to buy marijuana in Penfield than to drive the champagne to get it and drive back to Penfield smoking it on the way. So that's what I would say. You need to do a little bit more research. And the research is out there. Marijuana and its medicinal purposes was researched initially at the University of Illinois by Roger Adams, a well-known professor. So it has lots and lots of medicinal purposes. Alcohol has none. And Penfield has a saloon. Further comments, uh, Ms. Eisenman? I, I would like to say I did do my research. And um, if you go to the Betty Ford website, they talk about how they actually work and deal with people with substance and drugs and alcohol abuse. And they, too, are against it because it's sending the message to the children at an earlier age that there's not a problem with it. I am not discounting anything medicinal. That's totally different than a recreational. That's what my argument is with. And the trouble is when you start to make it seem like marijuana, it's OK. So the message you're sending to teenage boys and girls is, you know what, it's not really that big of a deal, so I'm going to do it anyways, because we're making it. I understand alcohol is dangerous. 
it has devastated my family as well, my brother and his whole entire family. Um, so to say I haven't done my research, I don't agree with that. I, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I am not a politician. I don't, this government regulation, like I'm not into that. <laughs> I'm the least person here that's like that. I simply am saying that there's not a positive impact because unfortunately marijuana can also, it um, makes you lack initiative, doesn't make you really uh, wanna go out and do a lot of things. Because, and also, back to the Betty Ford, I'm sorry, I didn't finish that. Um, if, if someone is struggling with any sort of mental illness, they can have a psychotic reaction, and that's very dangerous as well. So I did do my research. Mr. Thorsland. Well, just first of all, may I remind you that your presence here tonight makes you a professional politician because we get paid for being here. So whether you want to be one or not, you are. Sorry. Uh, I have a question. It's more for John. Uh, when I look at this sort of boilerplate ordinance that was suggested by, I think it was the Illinois, yeah, the CCI. Uh, part of the prohibition would be cultivation center. Uh, and so when Jody says, you know, they'll still be able to farm it because we have the right to farm, this says, no, you can't. So do we contradict our own right to agriculture if we were to not allow a grower to grow? Um, you know, we get into a strange area here. Um, so either we have to allow it or we have to come up with some compromise position where it's allowed in some places or we're violating our own ordinance for the right to farm. I, I don't know about uh, how that all plays out. I don't know if the state is looking at this as part of the whole agriculture ball of wax, which we are exempt from regulating. Um, I don't think anybody has an answer to that. And my suspicion is that a wealthy grower is going to defend his right to conduct agriculture. Um, that's something we can try to get uh, the state's attorney to get a better handle on. Um, but, you know, that who knows how long that might take to get a, a good Let me answer. Follow up. Uh, in regards to the state's attorney, if we prohibit all of these uses and a wealthy infuser or a wealthy manufacturer or a wealthy person of licensed transport, do we put ourselves in a position to be litigated against by having a, an outright ban? Is that, that's a question I think I would like to know about in regards in particular to the agriculture, but all of it. Well, infusing is not agriculture. Uh, dispensing is not agriculture. The only thing that's agriculture is growing the thing. Right. Um, but my question is more broad. You know, we have a state allowed use for someone to do a business that is allowed by the state. But the, the county says you can't do it. Well, I know but, we do other things like that. But the state has explicitly given counties the right to opt okay. out, so that's, right. there's no question about so that. So our gray area has mostly to do with that. Mr. Goss. Yeah, I do know that uh, certainly hemp hemp uh, growing is going to be done in regular fields. Um, you know, it's that's that's common, actually. I don't know that there's a lot grown around here, um, primarily because they're not sure that they can. The soils are so good that we're, we've, the people that I've talked to said we're afraid that it'll go over the 0.3 THC because the soils are so good. We're, we're monitoring it daily. At Purdue, I went to went over there and did some research on it. Purdue, they were actually monitoring it daily when it got close to harvestability because they found the better the soils, the quicker it went over. Now, it could have just been, they're, they're on the really infancy of their studies, so they don't really know if it was variety specific. Um, Obviously, you've got varieties for everybody wants to grow up for the oil because that's where the real money is. But the fibers have that same issue. They didn't, they were asked that question. Of course, we were talking to grad students who didn't know, hadn't done the, really the research. They were there as presenters. So I'm not sure that even industrial hemp could be grown here. It certainly is allowed in agricultural use. Um, I do know there is a grow facility. The closest one, I believe, to us is in Dwight. 
it's on the it's actually I, I believe right on 17 it's not identified um, in any way any fashion um, other than you perceive that the chain link fence is and the and the the greenhouse type warehouse is is what it's going to be so all recreational has to be grown in a controlled environment so you're going to have that you're going to have that where you're going to I mean, this, this committee is going to have to look at it for a special use permit because they're going to be covering up farmland to do that. So if it's out in the county, they're going to be covering it up with warehouse or something, some structure of that size. The one in Albion, I, I think, is, is bigger than the one in Dwight. But I, I assume these are something less than an acre, maybe under roof. But you do, we really don't know. And that's that's my my real issue with it is we're so early we really don't know what this is going to be. Um, you know the unintended consequences are what scared me more than the fact that we're trying to regulate business. It's once we get started, once we let the cat out of the bag, there's not really a way to get it back. I don't believe. Now I could be wrong on that, but and that's why why I'll be against um, I'll be against it is based on that. Just we. We just don't know enough, and there's no amount of research we can do because we've got. It's, I mean, it's an it's in its infancy infancy stages, and obviously we've got. I don't believe it's going to be sold in Penfield. I don't believe it's going to be. Well, it sounds like Rantoul might actually ban it, and so there you've got Champaign and Urbana, the large towns. Rantoul's kind of the next. Muhammad's the next. I I haven't heard for sure what Muhammad's going to do or St. Joe. We're not going to go to Penfield, but that doesn't mean we're not going to get a craft grower. We're not going to get um, an infuser, those kind of things. So, just my two cents. Thank you, uh, Mr. Patterson. <clears throat> um, I mean, we could have a discussion about w whether or not marijuana is good, and that's neither here nor there because it's it's the law. Um. We can have a discussion about whether or not marijuana should be in certain communities, but that's also neither here nor there because it will be in those communities. Um, the communities we're talking about, these are people who already buy most of their stuff at Champaign-Urbana, which we know Champaign-Urbana will be uh, allowing the recreational sale. Um, so this discussion is, to me, it's more about whether or not somebody has the right to own a certain type of business. Chances are that we have multiple categories of what somebody could do. Chances are it's not going to be a dispensary where people can go and purchase marijuana. It's going to be grower, infuser, transporter, something like that. That's something to where it's not even going to be accessible to the public. Uh, this is a very highly regulated law. I mean, Illinois approached this uh, in a very timid fashion uh, compared to other states and compared to how we treat alcohol, which can kill you. Um, and does kill people every day. Uh, so, you know, th this isn't a question about marijuana. I think this is a question about business. And uh, I just don't see the point in something being legal and uh, us saying that Champaign County is not open for business. Thank you. Further comments, Mr. McGuire? Thank you. Um, well, I guess to make a comment about that. I think it's about uh, if you do more of something that encourages it more. Um, talked about um, um, encouraging kids about smoking marijuana or something like that. It's interesting to me that they want to ban vaping and it, um, one of the issues is the flavor of, va of, of vape. A vape is encouraging kids to vape when the discussion is talked about um, that they want to infuse gummy bears and chocolate and things like that. And how chocolate and gummy bears aren't something that attractive to kids. Um, that's, you know, how, how that wouldn't be something that would encourage the use of uh, THC and marijuana um, for young people when young people are the most in impacted by marijuana and cannabis use. Um, but um, what we're talking about tonight is regulation. And that's what this committee does is regulate. That sounds like the biggest issue we have is what happens in the unincorporated areas. 
and they're in those unincorporated areas that don't have an opportunity actually to regulate because they don't have uh, government structures to regulate. Um, do they have, if they wanted a bar to move in, could they determine where that bar would be? Um, they, don't have an, they don't have an opportunity to do that. We do that for them by deciding whether um, they, they, with this law, whether, whether an infuser or uh, uh, a store that sells marijuana can be there since they can't regulate. I mean, it'd be kind of crazy if Muhammad decided that they didn't want to have uh, a retail shop for marijuana, and then we decided they, that it was okay to have a marijuana shop in the incorporated part of the county, and someone went in and put a retail shop next to uh, the Lake of the Woods so that they could sell into, into the Muhammad area. Um, that would be a little bit um, you know, kind of productive for the community. Um, obviously, the community would have decided that they didn't want the marijuana shop, but they'd be stuck with one because we decided something counter to what they wanted and expected to happen. Um, the communities may have decided that they wanted to regulate so that the retail shop wouldn't be next to a school or a church or um, a daycare, and they wouldn't be able to do that because they don't have the government structure to do that, and we're keeping them from being able to do that. Um, further is uh, the the, um, the discussion of smoking or consumption. There's no way to regulate where and how if a beer garden decides to do that, and we don't have the the, the deputies out in the, out in the rural areas to be able to. To, to manage that and to stop people from doing that if someone decides to have a retail area or, or something and smoking out in the, out in the, out in the public. So um, I, I think that it's much easier to control if we don't um, allow um, any of this to start in the first place. Um, so I'd be against it um, in the unincorporated areas. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion, comments, Mr. Thorsland? More questions for John. Uh, principal uses, uh, the dispensing organizations are only allowed in the B4 and B5 in the currently written proposed ordinance. How much B4 and B5 do we really have in the county? Um, I know there's some B4 in Pinfield. There's some B4 in Seymour. There's, uh, I'm not, I, I think there's some B4, very limited B4 outside of Muhammad. It, it spread around B5, there's even less of it, and it's spread even more. Uh, Mayview has a lot of B5. Yeah, I, re I recall this from, you know, zoning board, so many years on zoning board. And then for the infuser and the processing, it's an I-2, and we don't have a whole lot of that either, do we? No, that's much more restricted. Yeah. So these are, you know, besides the limit from the state, we also have a, a limit of the actual places you can do it. Uh, Muhammad's not really a great example to talk about this because Muhammad was dry up until 10 years ago, 9 years ago. And uh, so Lake of the Woods had all the bars. In fact, uh, we killed the little grocery store out there when the Muhammad decided that they wanted to have alcohol and the the IGA could sell it after not selling it for so many years. Uh, so I think you know Muhammad decided not to have the alcohol, and if they don't want to have it in Lake of the Woods, they should have incorporated Lake of the Woods. Um, and the same goes for this. The reason why it's not incorporated is because it is ours to decide. So we get to decide that, and if they don't want that, then they can step up and try to absorb more of the surrounding area. They choose not to. Out there in particular, I know the politics out there a little better than most because that's my old haunt. But I still think with Connie and Kyle that we're, we're overstepping regulating something. You know, If I was in a, a B4 and I had a trucking business, uh, and I wanted to become licensed to do this because I think there's going to be money to be made moving this around in the state, 
understand. I wouldn't want the county to tell me that I couldn't do it. Mr. Patterson. But just a question for John. Um, the state legislation, does, that doesn't allow for any use at a, uh, like a facility or like a dispensary to, to uh, consume cannabis, correct? That's my understanding. OK, so that's also my understanding. So, so I think the idea about discussing our inability to regulate whether or not people are going to decide to use it, you could apply that to heroin. You could apply it to people driving around and drinking. Like people may break the law. and. Uh, that's something that happens, but to say that we shouldn't do something because it will lead to somehow people breaking the law, I mean, I, that's not that's not how we make rules. Mr. McGuire. I guess maybe I should use the example of Rantoul. Rantoul decides they don't want to do this, then that's another um, bigger issue. Um, you know, DUI, includes the use of marijuana and you encourage more use you get more um, problems on our highways and travel and um, more people getting injured and hurt um, and you and you're expecting more you're, you're wanting more tax dollars from the sale of marijuana and alcohol use both at the same time out in the streets and then you want these people on the roads and obviously, some of the small towns may not appreciate that use, including Mar including Muhammad, where you used to live, apparently. That's not an issue for me. Thank you. Further discussion or comments? Seeing none, ready to vote. Or Mr. Goss? Yeah, could I ask a question? So we're... This vote is actually to define what what does this vote actually do? Okay. Item eight A is if you want to uh, opt in, we need to know where you want these things to be located and how what kind of an, a review process you want. The one I presented is the simplest possible, everything by right located in areas where similar uses are already allowed. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, and then um, item 9B is the prohibition ordinance. And um, you could actually mix these up. You could prohibit it in some areas, allow it in others. You know, it, it's, it would be quite an exercise to, to work through all that. So these are just very simple versions. One, allowing them in the zoning ordinance, the other one prohibiting them everywhere. Mr. Thorsland. Well, then to clarify, you said, you know, we could mix this up, but they're on two different parts of the agenda as it is now. So to mix it up, we would be working with our current agenda item and deciding that, you know, if we want a craft grower, that's agriculture, so it's by right. If we want a uh, dispensing organization, then maybe we want to make that a special use permit in the 1.5. This is the period to do that. The other one's just a ban, um, which has all these, you know, this is this stuff that's sent out. It, it's got the smell of Alec on it, but it's not. Uh, where it's just a bunch of blanks, in case people don't understand, uh, where you're just supposed to fill in things. This is provided by this uh, county association. Um, Right, and, and regarding that one, I have drafted one and had it reviewed by the state's attorney because that, when it comes right down to it, is not very pertinent to Champaign County. Right. If it's legal, right? Well, I mean, I have no reason to doubt that, but uh, we have a version ready to go to the county board if that's what this committee recommends. Okay. So then I guess the committee of which, uh, you know, just in case people don't understand, Mr. McGuire is observing, but he's not actually on it. Uh, we could sit and pick away at what we're working with right now and propose things and take a lot of votes, as you say, or we could just pass it as a by right. So thank you for bringing the two most simple and opposed versions of it to us because that's a starting point. Any further discussion? Okay. 
All in favor of the uh, Mr. Patterson. Sorry. So what we're voting on is what he has drafted with no changes to it. None have been proposed okay. at this point in time. So okay. the motion was by Mr. Thorsland, and I believe you seconded. I mean, just just clarified yeah. that. The last yeah, question the motion. Me off. The motion. <laughs> the motion is as presented. Okay. Cool. So. Yeah, we can have a roll. We can have a roll call. So, ask for the roll to be called, please. Dillard Myers. Eisenman. No. Fortado. Uh, Goth. No. Patterson. Yes. Thorsland. Yes. Esri. No. So at this level, that would be a that defeat. Is a tie. Tie is a, a defeat at the ELUC level. It's to be approved by ELUC. This is just to be approved by ELUC because then it would go to, if it had a past, it would have gone on for like public comment and so on and so forth. This isn't to be recommended to the county board. The next step would go to ZBA or for public comment. Okay, moving on then to nine new business items to be recommended to the county board. We have a public comment period for proposed fee increase for waste hauler license. Is there anyone from the public here to make a comment? The reasoning for this was we've we've discussed this before at this committee, but um, found out that to do it basically satisfy the legal legal um, need necessities that we needed to provide this public comment period. Um, Ms. Monty, do you want to speak to it just a little bit? Yes. Uh, the public notice was issued or published on October 19th, and it made sense not to have it go right to the county board, to have people comment there in the event that people wanted to comment. That's why it's back here. So uh, back on October, at the October meeting, this committee had already approved, unanimously approved this to recommend to the county board for approval. And, and this is just uh, covering our publication requirement and a delay, so it's back before you. And we are asking to just confirm, you could say our vote, it, it was unanimous at the last one, but we're gonna ask for a motion to make the motion again to what we did at the last meeting, which was to change the fee. It moved by Mr. Goss, seconded by Mr. Thorsland. Is there further discussion on the fees? Like I say, it was unanimous, but I mean, if you if you want to discuss it or whatever, we can do it now. <laughs> Mr. Patterson, just clarify what was the what was the or where is it at right now? The fee, Ms. Monty. Yeah, so microphone, please. It's not on. Then come on. Thanks. The v fee is twenty five dollar per uh, c contractor, mm -hmm. and depending on the number of licensed vehicles, that can range per vehicle from $3 to $50, essentially. So this makes it a more equitable, the increase would increase the fee per vehicle, the license fee per vehicle to $35 each. And the maximum allowable by the state statute is $50, so this is below that maximum. Yeah, previously it was regulated into groups by up to how many vehicles you had, and this is putting a per per vehicle. So the larger companies with more more vehicles in their fleet will be paying more. Um, and just a note from the last time, it, this isn't going to, not that it won't help, but that it will no, in no way cure our issues with um, solid waste and st the budget and everything for dealing with those for like the collection fees and stuff the collection programs that we put on and stuff it'll help but it's not gonna not gonna cure it because that budget is decreasing it's being used further discussion okay all in favor please say aye aye all opposed nay thank you that passed unanimously 
We're then on to 9B, Resolution Prohibiting Cannabis-Related Uses Pursuant to Public Act 101-0027. Is there such a motion? Mo moved by Ms. Eisenman. Seconded by Mr. Goss. Discussion? Mr. Goss? Yeah, so John, on this one, you say you've got something drafted that's better than what we have here. So, I mean... Does this need to be, are we just giving you direction to use that? We're not using, we're not giving you direction to use this one that's in the packet. No, we, we could not use the one that's in the packet. The one okay. that I've drafted, though, does the same things with the exception of the one in the packet says, um, uh, it talks about enforcement. Yeah, it's... Right. Um, it's actually anticipated to be part of a larger code, uh, paragraph four violations. Violations may be enforced in accordance with whatever section of the code they're working with. In the one that I have drafted and had the state's attorney review, enforcement would be done by the nuisance ordinance and the zoning ordinance. And we're anticipating that you would retain and make cannabis business establishes a public nuisance so that would be a violation of the nuisance ordinance. And we will have to amend the zoning ordinance to make it clear that, because right now the zoning ordinance has this provision that if you're proposing a use that is not listed in our table of uses, the zoning administrator picks something that is most similar. We do not want that to happen if you're going to prohibit cannabis. And what I would recommend is you do have a zoning ordinance amend that, amendment that actually says, for example, however, in the case of cannabis businesses, they are prohibited or something like that. And we can deal with that later. The state's attorney thinks it's actually a good idea, if you're going to prohibit it, to have this general prohibition ordinance and then follow up with a zoning ordinance amendment and the nuisance ordinance so that it, it actually does what you want, but this is a good start if that's what you want to do. Uh, follow up. You said enforced by nuisance, and what was the other one? Zoning ordinance. Okay, thanks. Further discussion, Mr. Thorsland. Well, for the, all the reasons I was for allowing it, and uh, you know, uh, I'm against prohibiting it uh, for all the business reasons that Connie pointed out so articulately. For all the reasons. Uh, for tax purposes, uh, and for you know the simple fact that we're, we're, this is not going to be something that's just not going to be happening because we decided to say you can't, uh, it's going to happen anyway, and uh, they're just going to come into Champaign and then they're going to drive home. Thank you. Further discussion, comments. Seeing none. We'll have a roll call then. Before we get to that, last chance, comments? Seeing none, ask for the roll to be called, please. Dillard Myers. Eisenman. Yes. Goss. Yes. Patterson. No. Thorsland. No. Esri. Yes. That is a tie, and this is where, since this was going to the county board, this would be advanced to the county board, but without recommendation. Okay, eight. Well, eight A. There are certain things that are handled at the count at the committee level and they stop at the county level whether we approve or disapprove that this is one of the items 8a because the next step in 8a would have um, in 8 8a would have been going out for like public hearings at the zba correct john so it wouldn't have gone next to the full county board it would have gone to the zba no because this one doesn't need to go to the zba Mr. Hall, could you you probably, you'd do a better job, I'm sure. Thank if you would please. Sure. Nine B is something we don't 
see that often here at the committee. It's it's a it actually is an ordinance. Sorry about that. It's an ordinance that the committee makes a recommendation to the county board. Um, it's a standalone ordinance. And as I was discussing with Mr. Goss earlier, if the county board adopts that, um, there should be follow on amendments to the nuisance ordinance and the zoning ordinance. Those would come through this committee, but that would only be after the county board would adopt that ordinance. Um, and the uh, zoning ordinance amendment then would start here at the committee, then go to the ZBA, come back to the committee, and then go to the county board. No, eight would only, it only goes to the ZBA if it's approved by this committee, but eight was not approved by the committee tonight. It was a tie, and so that doesn't, 9B goes to the county board, though. Because 9B is not a zoning ordinance amendment, it's a totally new ordinance. <clears throat> if, if it... Okay. We're then on to... Oh, Ms. Eisenman, go ahead. So if this fails at the county board and then 8A failed at the ELEC level, we have to make a decision somewhere what happens then. <laughs> this feels like when we needed to make the new county. I, I, yeah, I, 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 this is a really unique situation. I don't know what happens next. Um, um, but things can always be put on the ELUC agenda uh, by the ELUC chair. So, you know. Maybe at some point this will come back. I don't, that would not be up to me. Okay, before we move on, just, I mean, go ahead, Kyle. And I guess I want to, I'm, Connie, it's not just because you're new. I've been here a couple of years and I'm confused too by this. Um, so let's say um, the uh, prohibition passes the county board, then would that have to go to? No, that would be an ordinance in place. Um, with the understanding that to be able to enforce it, we need to amend the nuisance ordinance and the zoning ordinance. So, so that would be where the ZBA and the whole mm -hmm. back and forth would then come into on that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is confusing. <laughs> it, that's a confusing from a staff level too, so. <laughs> okay, ready to move on? I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to quilt or prohibit anybody from speaking on this. It isn't, it isn't always cut and dry, there's no doubt, on this. Okay, we're then on to 10 other business, semi-annual review of closed session minutes. Uh, we do have the recommendation from the state's attorney's office, and everybody's seen that here that is at the committee. Is there a motion to retain the closed session minutes as they are? Moved by Mr. Thorsland. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Goss. I don't suspect there's really any discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Aye, all opposed nay. Thank you, that passes. Chair's report, I have none. Uh, designation of items to be placed on the consent agenda. We have the proposed, um, that'd be 9A. It's not the public comment, it is the proposed fee increase for waste hauler license. And with that, if there are no objections, we are adjourned. Thank you.